Hey folks, it's Ben. We're here with another unboxing, assembly, and review video. This one's for something cool, and I need it for Sunday. Today happens to be Wednesday, so I gotta get this thing together. It's super cold. It's like 10 degrees Fahrenheit again, but like I said, I've gotta get this thing put together, so here I am working in the nice cold quonset with the heater on the camera to keep it alive. What we have today is a one-ton hydraulic engine crane. <clears throat> it comes in two boxes. This one was acquired from Canadian Tire. Uh, originally, I had planned to buy it from Princess Auto. Uh, however, <clears throat> at the time they had it in stock, by the time they got to my order, they were out. So uh, I wasn't able to get it. So what we'll do here is we'll unsnip this, we'll unbox everything, read the instruction manual, and then we'll assemble it, and then we'll lift up something, maybe my fat cat or whatever, uh, to see if it works. That way we can take it uh, into Red Deer, Alberta on Sunday to go pick up a motor, which he doesn't have a hoist for to put in the back of my truck. So this will lift that motor, put it in my truck, then I'll throw this back in the truck and we'll just hope that it all works out. So let's get going. Let's cut the thing open. Let's bring you in for a quick look. In the little box here, it's only this sub subframe. Uh, What's important to note here is that there's a loose nut washer and there's a lock nut somewhere or a lock washer in here somewhere. There it is, it's underneath the beam there. So that just came off that bolt there, so that's cool. And then we have the nuts and washers for that. I don't think there's much assembly involved here. We've got our hydraulic jack. A bits and piece. I'm guessing I might go for that. So I'm going to read the manual real quick and then we'll come back to I think would be assembly. Must store on hard, hard level land. Extension boom must draw back to boom. Hydraulic unit must be at lowest position. Use pin to fix folding front leg. Store by wall or fixity. Hmm. Okay and no outside force to pump. Alrighty, so let's read that quick and then we'll get it set up. One thing I forgot to show you is what's in these boxes, uh, but I believe these should be the wheels and any other mounting hardware that we might need. And sure enough, here are four wheels and bolts for said wheels. And then we have the caster wheels and the bolts for those as well. So to get going, there'll be a lot of time lapse in here where I go quick and not go quick, uh, but we're gonna be putting, step one is to take these caster wheels and install them on the base that's here. So this is the actual base of the unit. That's loose out. So it's actually gonna sit like this, and we're actually gonna bolt these caster wheels to these bottom slots right here. So why these are slotted is what they want you to do is to put the wheel on with the far, I guess the inward side first, and it lets you get near the edge so you can put in a washer, a lock washer, and a nut on the inside. And then before you tighten it down, we'll push it in and then we'll do the, these outer ones here and the holes that don't have slots. That way we can get them started without having to mess around too much, hopefully. Next up is these casters over here. And we already have the pins, or the plates are already welded to the frame. The question is, are these the same size? No, they are not. But I'm guessing the smaller ones go here because the big ones don't fit. So pretty easy on that regard. Once again, we have another bag full of washers, bolts, and nuts. That's bag number two. In theory, there are four sleeves in here. And of the four of them, there are two sizes. So there's two small ones, 
Or are they all the same? Looks like they might all be the same, actually. So, we need to go with the wheel, the, the sleeve, actually, goes in the wheel. That goes in, we put the nut, uh, the bolt through. Looks like we've got a same scenario of a washer, lock washer, and nut. The other size, in case you were following along and I didn't uh, put it in the text, is that we're 13 millimeters on the bolt head and we are 14 on the nut. So you can tighten those up. Because of the sleeve, we don't really have to worry too much about it binding up. We should be okay. Believe it or not, this assembly is complete for this process of the wheels. Next will be the long legs, these guys here. And if you'll notice, not this one, that's the center mass. We've got this guy here, which has another wheel support here. This support which has a wheel support there. So next we put the wheel on these two ends that are actually going to be the legs out on the uh, crane. Okay, ready for the next one. The next step is actually to put the extension arms on the base you see here. Now, this is where one of my bolts had come undone, but that's okay because we have to undo them anyway. That one's undone. And then for the pins here, pull them out as well, but we're not going to put them far because they're going right back in. Then you want to take your arm extensions here essentially and making it so the wheel faces forward while it's in the hoist. So in this case you can see that the wheel will face straight forward when it's kind of at this angle. That puts this one on the other side. We'll go ahead and pair these up now. The pin wants to go through here. And that's one connection. The next connection we have actually uses these plates you see here. Now it's a triangular plate. It's got a big hole, a small hole on the bottom, and then a big hole on the top. And that's going to actually mate up back here. And you'll see that there is a small drilled hole. And in our box there, we've got some little uh, bolts. And this is actually a tapped hole. So we're going to take our large nut, or I'm sorry, our large bolt. It's actually going to go through. And it's going to go through this and the back here. And what this will enable the whole thing to do is you'll be able to pull the pin and pivot the leg up for storage is the idea. So then we're going to put a washer and our lock washer and our bolt or our nut. Sorry, I keep interchanging those all the time. If you're watching the channel, I do it constantly. Sorry about that. Um, we're going to be 22 on the nut side. Probably like a 21, but actually, to be honest with you, a 13 16 actually fit pretty good on this side. And uh, but before we get this tightened, we actually probably should come in with our little holder nut, little holder bolt here, piece, lock, and go ahead and start it while we, it's loose and we can move it around a little bit. The next little bit of assembly deals with the, the tall support shaft. 
and our cool little handle here that moves the whole thing around. If I flip it over, you'll see that there's two holes here. It doesn't appear that this has an orientation. It's just that way, but you could probably put it this way. It shouldn't really matter. And with the two remaining little guys you've got, with their lock washers, you should be able to lock this in. We're gonna roll back on this shot here because we're now adding our mast to the assembly and I've got a bolt fell off that end because it's missing the end, it's over here. And we'll take the, uh, it's nice they pre-started everything so that the nuts aren't lost in shipment but they did, could put them in a little bit farther. So what we do is we set the center mast and have it tilt towards the back of the our plane here essentially. And we'll drop those two in there. And then same old, same old, washer, lock washer, and nut on the bottom of these bolts. Next up we have our side support rods and so they actually there's two and they're actually going to go into this nut that's here and the nuts that's here and according to that that's the way they go. Is there a little turn on that? Because there's one that looks like it's going to be at a slight angle Looks like these are side specific, although it doesn't seem how side specific they are. It looks like they're just bent this way flat. And there's not an actual twist to them, which because this is at an angle and this is straight, you'd think there'd be a little bit, but I'm guessing as we tighten them down, they'll adjust themselves. Now we're getting to the good stuff. <clears throat> so the bolt fell out and that I have the ends for. I put them back in this box here. It's for our main, I'd call it jib assembly. Now the black part pulls out. And I would advise doing that because this thing is heavy. <laughs> but it pops in here. We put our bolt through here and it's got reinforced collets and everything. It's fairly heavy duty. So a lot of the weight's gonna be pushed through here. Let's put on this nut. Now let's not go too crazy because this is a hinge point. And we're getting bigger still. Now my 22 won't even fit. So as we slowly progress up the unit here, we're getting bigger and bigger. I gotta go get in another adjustable wrench. I don't carry anything bigger than a, I might have a 23. In a weird turn of events, my iPhone overheated because the heater was too warm. <laughs> so that never happens. So let's go ahead and uh, we're near the end. We actually have two more bolts left to go. The first one is the upper, Jack mount. No. Now, this jack, you want to have it so that the, the pump is actually still overheating my iPhone. <laughs> so we've, I don't know where it cut off. So long story short, I hung this one first and this hand fits right in the arm. And the second bolt, you kind of adjust the arm to get your, your jack height right. And we'll put the washer, lock, washer, and bolt nut in. We already got the bolt in the bottom here. Now 
Those are all together. Now we're really at the point where we're acting just like a jack. So if we take, and we have the supplied rod and it's got a little notch cut out of the end. Let's tighten that and pump it up and make this arm level. And what we're planning to do is put the arm in. Cool little starburst coming off that light over there. So now that we're flat, it seems like it would be much easier to put this guy in. Now, it's not pre-assembled by any means, but quarter ton, half ton, three quarter ton, all the way into, there's the hole, right there. One ton, all the way in. In your kit, there's a handle. So you can pop the pin out, slide the handle through, put the pin back in, and now you've got 2,000 pounds of pickup, in theory. Uh, but one thing to remember, it's not all assembled yet. You do need to tighten this guy in. They did install it for us, and that was nice, but we do need to actually latch it in or tighten it so it's not going to go anywhere. So now we've got that set in. So all our bolts are tightened. So for me, it raises the question, and I figured it out just now. <laughs> What were those pins for down here? <laughs> but what they're for is when we pull a pin, lift it out, we bring up a leg and drop rocks everywhere, we can then put the pin back in and hold the leg upright. That's why it's got six wheels, is that now you can roll it around on its own and you can probably bring the mass down. And so it's fairly compact, but then when you actually need to lift something, you put the pins, you slide it down here, put the pin back in, which is hard to do. Welcome to gravel and like such. So that's the assembly of this cool jack crane. They call it an engine crane. Uh, coming down, it's just like any other hydraulic check. You actually righty tidy lefty loosey it. And if we had any weight, I'm guessing yeah, it would come down on its own. Now there's one thing we do have to do before we can actually use it, use it. And that is to, now I'll bring you in on this one. There is a little air vent here, or vent for the jack in case there's some some air in here. So let me quickly reread on how to do that. I think we're just gonna pull out that a little bit and vent off any air that might be in it. So there is a purge procedure I guess you can do where you, um, you uh, take it and you release the pressure by at least one full turn. You pump this a couple times and then it says use a screwdriver and kind of pry without damaging the, the, the little plug up here. But that's a, a Phillips, B uh, you screw it out and see it'll fall out if you don't, you know, if you're not careful. And it's just a cylinder of air in here. So I'm guessing if there was pressure or something built in there, bubbles, what have you, you're supposed to do it without any load on the crane. So uh, what I know is that uh, there is no oil there. Maybe I need to put some oil in it. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but it seems to jack up all the way. But you do that procedure and then you put the plug back in and you're good. You can tighten it up and um, pump away. So uh, I'm gonna assume it's primed until it's not. Uh, I will need to lift up something before we take it <laughs> to a distance to lift up a motor, right? So, uh, and it's not that hard to operate, but uh, so I will lift something, probably a human, <laughs> uh, just to make sure it does work, but that's it. I think it's, so far, it's a great unit. It's all in how the pump is, right? Like the, the metal parts won't fail. They're, they're fairly machine molded, uh, but it's how the pump does. So we'll see how that goes and only time will tell, unfortunately. But so far, all the parts were included. Assembly instructions were fairly clear. Everything was almost pre-installed. So, so far, so good. I like it. Um, I'm probably gonna use it for most on the three quarter, on the one ton, um, quarter ton rating. 
And one of the reasons why we need to do that, and one of the reasons why I was gonna kinda use this type, two reasons actually, is number one, they're gonna be slightly overrated anyway, so one ton might be one and a quarter ton, maybe. Number two, this is just HSS, high strength steel, tubular steel. So if I needed to be longer to get in a little deeper, uh, I can just get some HSS of this size, whatever it is, I'll have to measure it. And I could technically put a longer arm on this if I needed to. Why am I worried? My Fiero, right? It's gonna be, we're gonna be lifting this Iron Duke out of here and dropping a new Iron Duke in, or not a new, but a used, but maybe running. <laughs> we'll find out. This one's gotta come out anyway to get rebuilt if I'm gonna rebuild it. Uh, so we got to take it out, but my distance between the bumper and the motor is about 37 inches, so uh, the length on this guy is about 44, so I should have plenty of space, but it's one of those things where You know you got to think about things ahead of time I could technically raise the car and drop the engine out But in this case I'm leaving the transmission and all the fun stuff there. We're just gonna We're gonna take our time. It's not in a hurry. So here we go. You guys have any questions on this jack uh visit the turbo 231 channel that's where you'll actually see it in use eventually don't like run off right now <laughs> this is a new video nothing will be there but uh we will be pulling uh lifting an engine onto the back of the truck we'll definitely lift an engine off the back of the truck uh to the ground and we'll be using this for it so uh we'll have some good real use there uh, so if you have any questions, ask them comments like you have one and it's great or you have one and it sucks, leave them. And uh, let's go. Look at that. Huh? Uh, and subscribe to this channel, Red Barn Homestead for unboxing, building, that sort of review type of videos. Cool homestead stuff we're still doing. Um, we got some craft stuff coming up as well. Uh, and hit Turbo 231. I'll leave a link in the back. Um, for that as well. You'll actually get to see this thing in use on things like that and uh, other cool stuff. So you guys have a good day and I'll pause for 20 seconds. So actually I'm going to pause over here. What's the actual temperature in here? I can throw up the cards. Editor guy, throw up the cards. Ah, oh, it's a balmy 21 degrees. What are we talking about? It's nice. Catch is everything's metal, it sucks the life right out of your hands. And I overheated my camera right here, so let's do that again. Per.